want to thank the Lord for what he's done for me. He made a way out of no way. Thank you. Thank you for singing to the glory of God this morning. We thank God for this praise team who have been faithful over these last 13 months of singing to the glory of God. Without question, they are faithful to the ministry. Give God praise for them for what they, they do for the glory of God. Turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, Luke the 19th chapter. And I'm gonna start at the 37th verse. Glad to see my brother here this morning and it was the first time he's been back since that triple bypass surgery and me and my sister-in-law, we just thank God for healing power. Thank God for all who have been healed, delivered and set free by the power in the hand of God. Praying for Sister Mary King who lost her sister just the other day. Brother King who lost his mother which is her husband, last week. A lot of death, but there's a whole lot of resurrection. So to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. So we are praying for all of those that were in the prayer list this morning. Continue to pray for me. And you, you see my back is somewhat out of whack. My wife made sure I got up this morning. Well, God woke us up this morning. Then she made sure I prepared enough just to get here and I thank God for her always taking good care of me that I can complete what the Lord has to do in my life so thank you Luke 19 starting at verse 37 and when he was come nigh even now to descend of the Mount of Olives the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees, or church folk, from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, then the stones would immediately cry out. I want to live for a subject, do you have faith to go a little further? Do you have faith to go a little further? You've got to understand, people of God, if nothing else during this season of seclusion and this pandemic, the question has been asked often, how are we going to make it out? The problem is that though this pandemic has never been seen, this coronavirus has never manifested to this point. All of us have been through a situation in our lives where we have had a notion to want to quit. There's been a time when things got hit, hit us so hard that we said, Lord, help me to hold out. But what happens when your faith wavers? There comes a time in all of our lives where we say, Lord, what can come next? But the problem with asking that is, as bad as things are, it could be a whole lot worse. So we learn how to give God glory in every situation because we look at the Gospels and find out that Jesus went through worse. Jesus is being led to what is his eventual demise of his human existence on earth to be able to be ascended into the glories where the Holy Spirit would be left as comforter. This is Passover time, and as a Passover, we find out of the Old Testament reading, it confirms in the New Testament, that in the Old Testament, that when the children of Israel were able to put uh, the blood over their doorposts, and over their doors that the plague or, or the thing that would come of the judgment has passed over that their lives would be spared. And God told them that after this that they were to go to Jerusalem every year, which time would be called Passover, that they may be able to celebrate and commemorate the time where God's hand sustained them during this time called Passover. 
So every pious Jew, every, every uh, uh, committed Jew would go to Jerusalem every year. They still do it to this very day. They, they are there today in flocks and molds being able to commemorate the time that God was able to pass over and we would do this until his return. The crowds are everywhere and we know by the historian Josephus that over two to three million people were there at this time as he writes. And Josephus writes that the people came to be able to give praises to God for the miracle of Passover. But not only the miracle of Passover, but brothers and sisters for the miracles that he had done in their lives. And you must understand if none of you feel like God had done any miracle in your life, let me tell you something, that God is still working miracles. I don't care what the TV says. I don't care what the soothsayer said. I don't care what the witch worker made, makes out and says. Let me tell you, God is still working miracles. He's working miracles every day. He's healing every day. He's raising folk from dead situations every day. He's turning families around. He's turning finances around. And if you don't believe it, if I gave some of the people the mic that came today, they would tell you miracles is happening all over my life. And if you don't believe a miracle is happening in your life, guess what? All you have to do is pinch yourself. And if you're alive and well and woke up this morning and in your right mind, a God worked a miracle in your life. What's wrong with you sitting in your living room talking? right now talking about I don't have no miracles I ain't got no stimulus check things ain't turn around I'm almost evicted I don't have good food in the refrigerator but you forgot if God left you here he sustained you and you might not have what you want but God knows you got all you need and every now and then you ought to thank God that you got faith to go a little further and I want to ask somebody who's in Simon Temple and watching this morning do you have faith to go a little further I know you got faith to be able to complain but do you have faith to be able to say this morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt. Do you have faith to say, he that hath begun a good work in me shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ? Do you have faith enough to say, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who strengthened me? Do you have faith to say, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the first and not the last. And things may not look good right now, but all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I want you to say to yourself, I've got the faith to go a little further. If some of you won't praise God, let me tell you in that crowd on that day that Jesus is coming down the Viva Della Rosa as he comes to a time where they have palms and then they put clothes in his way. I believe that blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, since some of you won't praise the Lord, blind Bartimaeus was in the crowd. And honey, I believe he was saying, I met a man named Jesus that one day when I was sitting on the wayside, I hollered out to him and the, 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 the disciples told me to hold my peace. But I cried out a little bit more. Then this man named Jesus says, thou faith has made thee whole. And is there anybody out there that know that the doctor said you wasn't going to make it? The people say it wasn't going to turn around, but it was Jesus that worked a miracle in your life. If you won't praise the Lord, I can tell you about a little short, a height deprived, vertically deprived man named Zacchaeus. He sat up there and saw Jesus was passing by. He was a tax collector and people had put him out of the family and the fold. But when he heard Jesus, he, when you hear Jesus Jesus passing by. You'll find a way to get in his way. And since he was too short to be seen, he got up in a tree. And Brother Smith, he looked down and Jesus told him, come down from where you are. And he went into Zacchaeus' house and he said, you might be ostracized by people, but I've made you the number one stunner. What, 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 what? See, Jesus will turn some stuff around for you that when people put you out, God will bring you right back in. Maybe y'all don't know them two people, but do you know a man named Lazarus? Because I I think he was in the crowd because he had faith to go a little further. And if, Zach, uh, if, if, if Lazarus could go a little further, remember he was not blind and he was not short and he was not lame, but they said he was dead and his sisters said, Jesus, y'all done ate chicken wings and neck bones at my house and I asked for you to come and be able to heal my brother and if you'd have been there, my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus says, it's good that he's died, that I might be able to get the glory. And he didn't just wait one day, two days, three days, but he waited four days. And Reverend Free to be me for Lincoln T, it said that when he came up to the tomb, he said, Lazarus, 
arise. And when he got up out of his tomb, he had on tomb clothes. And he said, loose him and let him go. Can I tell somebody out there today, if you got faith to go a little further, God will bring you out of dead situations. He will lift you up when you're down. He'll bring you in when you're out. Is there anybody that can praise God that I got a faith to go a little further? Things may not look right in your life right now. Things may not look right in your bank account. But how many know if God be for me, who can be against me? Oh, I'll praise God by myself if you won't praise God. Because I'm in the crowd today. Because if I'm living and I got my right mind, got reasonable portion of health to strength, got two nickels in my pocket, I mean, and oh, God will press down, shaking together and running over. How many of y'all got faith to go a little further? If you got faith to go a little further, I dare to give praise right now. I know you're tired. I know you're weak. I know you're down. But when God woke you up this morning, he gave you faith to go a little further. Jesus finds himself in a situation where he's got faith to go a little further. You complaining about what you got to go through. How about Jesus saying, I know I'm going to die on Friday, but I will not be dead for long. And Dr. Oliver, a lot of folks don't understand that a lot of people go through dead situations. But Reverend Van Dyke, just because I look dead don't mean I ain't coming out. If you understand that there's a lot of folk who are going through stuff right now, Reverend Matthews, they don't understand how you're able to shout, how you're able to holler, how you're able to smile. Because I understand this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. How many know at the end of the day, all I got is my praise? And I'm not going to let you take what I got because understand I ain't praising God for you I'm not praising God for where I am right now I'm praising God for where he's trying to take me and how many got faith to go a little further I might not have a whole lot of faith but I got faith the size of the mustard seed and as long as I got enough faith God will pick me up turn me around place my feet on solid ground somebody don't high five your neighbor just look at him and say I got faith to go a little further He's walking with his disciples. And notice this, you can't take everybody with you. Because when you got faith to go in the unknown, places that you've never gone before, it says that he takes his disciples. And let me cut to the chase here. When he gets his disciples in place, he tells two of them to go ahead of them. For there is a coat tied up in the city. And the coat is tied up in the city. And he says, tell the, them that the Lord hath need of them. And when he says, he said, when you find the coat, Loose him, Reverend Seed, and let him go. Now understand something. Jesus didn't uh, uh, correctly own the coat because he did not have a deed of sale. But let me tell you something. Because Jesus, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, but the owner of the coat didn't buy it for Jesus. He bought it for himself. But watch what happens in the text. It says that he's never been written, that he's never been used, but he's sitting there waiting to be used. Which means the man who bought him on earth already knew that he planned to use him. But because God decided to use him for him, he let him stay in a place unused, unseen, until his time came. So he says, when you get to this coat, loose him and let him go. And if anybody say anything to you, tell Jesus has need, or oh, the Lord has need of him. Which, I uh, understand the Lord in the Greek is, 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 is dissected as mean curios, which means the owner's owner. So what he's really saying, don't miss it now. Let me put a kickstand so you can get what I'm saying. They say the Lord hath need of him. So Reverend Wisdom, what he's saying is the owner's owners have need of him. Y'all get it when I get back for the third time. So what he's really saying is when you get there, somebody tried to stop you. And even if it's the owner, tell them that the owner's owner has need, which means the owner didn't need. But the one who made the owner already predestined that the coat would be there for the time. Some of y'all miss y'all shout. Let me tell you, God has set up some stuff for you and he's reserved some stuff for you. He's put some stuff in front that you can't even see yet. And if you just go a little further, God's going to manifest that miracle for you right now. How many know God is a providential God? He knows exactly what you need before you get there. 
these curves. This, these disciples had faith to go a little further. And understand in all the synoptic gospels and Matthew, Mark, and Luke, even in John, it's picked up that in the text it says this. Number one, I'm a, I'm a Methodist preacher. I got three quick points. First of all, you got to understand something that when you're dealing with this, you're dealing with a picture of prophecy. A picture of prophecy. For you will find out, and in verse 28, it says, It's when thou hast thus spoken, he went before, ascending up to Jesus, Jerusalem. So you understand in Zechariah 9 and 9, it says this right clear, which confirms the picture of the prophecy that the king is riding on a donkey. So that's confirmation that fulfills prophecy that God reveals himself to say, I will confirm exactly what I said, which means from the Old Testament to the New Testament, from Zechariah all the way up to Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he confirms that I'm going to do it exactly what I said and you can count on my word. Some of y'all miss your shout again because you got to understand something. If God said it, you got to trust his word. And how many of you know sometimes things get bad, but I may not trust people. I might not trust the, the World Health Organization. I might not trust uh, the CDC. I might not trust the president. I may not trust Dr. Fauci, but I know how to trust the living God. And can I tell you something? If God gives you a word, you can take it to the bank. And how many of you know you have a people have failed you but God will never fail you can I tell some of y'all just a few of y'all in this sanctuary God's already got a word for you and I tell you the word right now can I tell it to you I'm gonna give you a secret I ain't gonna let nobody else know miracles and see let me tell you something miracles been happening all over the place miracles been happening to people uh, in our congregation and those that are watching and you've got to understand God will fulfill his miracles notice what they say they say here comes the king they take palm branches and they are waving them, which means victory. They take clothes and put them down. And when they put them down so he can walk on, the, so the donkey can walk on the clothes. And notice what happens in the text. They say, uh, uh, this, is, this is crazy. Remember that night they said, here comes the king. Now, if you don't know your biblical history, let me just enlighten you. Pilate was the king at the time. Pilate is the king. But yet, watch what he's saying, Reverend Young. They say, here comes the king, the Lord of lords and king of kings. So what it, what it leads me to believe then is that they are calling him something before he gets there. That means that they are asking or naming him of what he's going to be before he actually gets the title. Some of y'all don't understand that God has already predestined and preordained that you're going to be something that nobody else can see. And somebody else may have the spot. Somebody else may have the position. Somebody else may have the pedigree. Somebody else may have the resume. Somebody else may have the credit score. But when God gets ready to elevate you, he will put you where you need to be. So you got to hang on and go a little bit further. Is there anybody know that God's got some stuff laid up for you? Oh, I wish I had some faith walkers with me this morning that no God ain't through with me yet. There's an old song that used to say God is not through with me yet and when God gets through with me I shall come forth as pure gold. Somebody say I got the faith to go a little bit further. You must understand in the text. You've got to understand as the plot thickens it says that the gospel writers are trying to tell us number two that we see preeminence in his power preeminence. Anytime you got the faith to fight home, number two, you will see preeminence in his power. God has all power. Man has limited power. So anything that man sets up, if God wants to override it, God has the power to do it. Understand that they come in saying, Hosanna in the highest. In every synoptic gospel, it says they're saying, Hosanna in the highest. Bless is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Now understand, Hosanna is a word of praise. It's a word of proclamation. So in the original Hebrew text, it's really, if you break it down, it says, save now. So Hosanna is not a person. It is not Jesus. It means Hosanna means save now. So what he's doing is showing the preeminence of his power. What they're saying is, if you got a faith to go a little bit further, when Jesus comes in and he comes down to Viva de la Rosa, as he's running and they've got palm through claiming the victory, notice this, that he's getting ready to go to his crucifixion. But watch this. Let, let me uh, exegetically excavate the text. It says that when he's 
doing the palms, that means they're claiming victory even though he's on the way to death. Which means it's oxymoronic. How can you praise God in a dead situation? Well, I want to tell somebody out there that they are praising and saying Hosanna because they understand something that the government shall be on his shoulders, which means God's got the last word and the final say so. And if you will learn to have the faith to go a little further and lift up your head, all ye gates, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. See, some of y'all don't understand something. You ought to be shouting right now because the preeminence of the power of God will be able to put you in places that men can't bring you out of. How many know the power of God? It was the power of God that brought you out of that dead situation. Now watch what it is. I, I, just, I just got this. That watch what happened. They are crying, Hosanna. And they are trying to be able to propel him down for his victory. But on Friday, it's already proclaimed that he's going to die. But the difference is, the reason he was able to complete his assignment is because he knew he was getting back up again. Can I tell somebody out there, you may be down, you may go down, you may lose the situation. But how many can proclaim, I will get back up again. Oh, I wish y'all would praise God with me to know that you coming out of that situation. God God is able to restore the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, and the uh, locust has stole from you. Somebody say, I'm getting it all back. I'm getting it all back. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this what he does here. See, he says, are you willing to go a little further? Do you have faith to go a little bit more down the road? Jesus goes down the road. They're saying, Hosanna in the highest. And, and see, when they're doing this, you've got to understand something. He's still the savior. His predicament don't stop him from having the power. Even though some people would try to crucify him. No matter what folks try to do to you, if you've got faith to go a little bit further, God says, I got enough power to propel you into your next destiny. And I want to ask somebody, I asked you this earlier, but you didn't answer me. How many of y'all felt like giving up sometime? How many of y'all felt like this stuff was just getting on you? How many of you had to fight the spirit of depression, the, the spirit of anxiety? Well, I want to tell you what, whether we are in isolation another year or not, I've learned how to bless God and give God praise for whatever situation I find myself in. Let me tell you, COVID shouldn't be able to stop you. Let me tell you, a pandemic ought to be able to stop you, but you've got to be able to bless the Lord with the faith you've got inside of you. Watch what happens when the story, and this is the part I like, and this is the part we're going to uh, we're gonna end on today. Notice what they said in the text. It says, as when they was come nigh, and then the, beside, the, the, the people began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for the mighty works that they did. This is what it said. Y'all look at Luke 19 and look at that uh, 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 37th verse. It says, for all the mighty works that they had seen. Saying, blessed come the king in the name of the Lord. Peace on heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees said, the multitude need to shut up. Pharisees and those they are modern day church folk saying it don't take all that. But it said that the people just kept on hollering. And notice what Jesus says. He says, if these shall hold their peace, then the rocks are going to cry out. Number three, if you've got faith to go a little further, God will give you perpetual praise. He will give, that means everlasting, continuing praise. He says, if these shall hold their peace, then the rocks are going to cry out. Now, I don't know about you, but I've learned something during this time, that my praise cannot be negotiated and it will not be defiled because I've come to the point where I'm like the people who are sitting up here saying, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed be the name of the one that comes in the name of the Lord. And it tells me, Brother Greg, that he's, he's sitting there. It says that the people are watching and people are giving God praise for what they've seen. Now, I know I talked about buying Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus that sat by the wayside. I, I know I talked about Zacchaeus that was in the tree and Lazarus that had to be raised from the dead. But I believe there was also the woman with the issue of blood that came up from the back and said, I ain't bleeding no more. But let me tell you about a man that when I touched the hem of his garment, he gave his faith 
to go a little further. If I can't use her, let me use a man that was at the pool for 38 years, that every time that the angel came down from heaven, that he could not get into the water fast enough, and the Lord came back and said, will thou be made whole? I believe he was in the crowd, said, I ain't got to wait no more. Or maybe it was a man and a little boy who had mud put in his eyes, and God told him to go down to the pool of Shalom, and he told him to wash his eyes because he was able to be seen with a second touch. I believe that the man with the withered hand was out there. And Reverend Free to be me for Lincoln T. Honey, I believe that he sat there and said, look at my hand and they do too. Look at my feet and they do too. And he started to praise God. Well, maybe y'all say, I don't know none of these people. But let me tell you about a young man who's a preacher about 52 years old with back problems who all week long had his stuff together had already stopped taking whatever he needed to take and was ready for Sunday morning well yesterday about 5 o'clock his back went back out again uh, the nerve hit all the way up to his neck and all the way down to his feet and numbness was all the way from his waist all the way down to his toes and he fell down in the living room and cried out Lord help me and he was in traction all night long and his wife had to help him to go from place to place but then he called his doctor not the doctor that made the doctor that made the doctor but he called his chiropractor this morning and the chiropractor said I'm closed but for you to come and I'll take care of you because I need to get you right to preach the word of God and if I can do, complete my assignment that you go a little bit further if I can get your back straightened up so you can be able to stand up that the devil will sit down and shut up then I'll get you right so he pushed me over here and he adjusted me over there and I had a cane walking in but I came out without my cane saying if it had not been for the Lord on my side and the devil tried to hold me back and said you wasn't gonna make it so if you won't praise the Lord I praise God for a miracle that when he woke me up this morning I had some problems in my body but it was not the chiropractor that healed me it was a doctor that made the doctor that is the doctor his name is Jesus is there anybody out there that can give God praise right now that when you thought you couldn't make it it was the Lord that took you a little further somebody got faith to go a little further oh, now don't trick me now there is a fountain filled with blood Wrong from Emmanuel's vein. Death. See, you've got to understand something. That when you're down, God will pick you up. When you're out, God will bring you back in. Is there anybody out there that can say, yeah, yeah, yeah? Got to have faith to go a little further. I got faith to go a little further. I got faith. I was sinking. Deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters he lifted me, now safe in my. It was love that lifted me. And it said those in the crowd were praising God for what they had seen. For all that we've seen this year, we ought to be praising God. Shouldn't nothing be able to stop us. I don't care how bad it get. People complaining right now. What you got to complain about? You still here? I heard somebody, overheard somebody in the store the other day. I ain't get no stimulus check. I'm talking about me. I wanted one of them. Brother Finch, person was in there complaining because they've got a certain number of dependents, but the government only sent them two checks. I said, hold up. I said to myself, I'm grown in Christ and I ain't fighting with crazy folk. I said to myself, you better be happy for what you got. And she was up there complaining in the store as she was buying three TVs. Uno, dos, tres. Three TVs. And I'm sitting there you got a stem. Now, it ain't my business. I, ain't, I don't want nobody counting my paper. I shouldn't be counting her. But I'm not the one that was complaining. So she opened the door. And she was telling the cashier, and they're going to give me, and they need to give me my other two checks so I can come back and buy the surround sound to go with it. 
And I'm sitting up there saying, I ain't getting no check. And I ain't going to get that one. I'd love to get $1,400. You know, y'all got an extra $1,400? I mean, come on, with $1,400. And she was complaining. And there was this man that was sitting there with an oxygen tank. He was getting something. I don't even know what he was getting. They wanted three TVs. He was getting something. And he was sitting there doing like this in his wheelchair. I just happened to have on a Simon Temple shirt. He said, young man, do you go to that church? I said, yes, sir, I go to that church. He said, do y'all believe in the power of God and miracles and speaking in tongues? I said, yes, we do. He said, well, y'all believe in the full gospel. I hope you don't complain like that young sister did right there. I said, bro, I ain't complaining for nothing. And he started to tell me his story. How last year, this time, he was one of the first patients that caught coronavirus. He stayed in the hospital on a ventilator because of his pre-existing conditions. And he served in the military. They took care of him. He said, but it hurt my body, so I'm still suffering from COVID. He said, but I'm still here. I'm still here. I I'm still here. And, and it made me say in my spirit, that brother's got the courage to complete his assignment. But the Lord touched me this morning and for this second service they have, you got the faith to go a little further. He's got faith to go a little further. And I just gave you an example of somebody, not that we're any better, any worse. It's him riding in his wheelchair with that oxygen, still giving God praise, saying, I'm still here. That's his testimony, not complaining. What do you have to complain about? All you need is the faith to go a little further. There's somebody out there right now that realize you need the faith to go a little further. And God woke you up so you got faith. You got to hold on, but faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. And this word of God says that you are more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you. So I want to ask you in virtual church and those who may be watching all over the world, I want you to turn your complaining into testimony. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimonies. It may be bad. I'm not, I'm not denying that things don't get rough. Do you realize yesterday when that pain hit me, when, that, when my, my back goes out occasionally, and I still believe God for healing. We've been praying for healing. I'm claiming healing, but I got to go through the process. I believe, but when that thing hit me, any brother Van Dyke no back problems and some of y'all know back problems when that thing hit that sciatic nerve and them nerves and you lose all feeling in the body in your bottom portion of your body your legs and your feet and you fall straight to the ground and at that point you feel absolutely helpless like you gonna die now I don't know what death feels like but if that's word pain I don't want to know it and it lasts for just a few minutes and then you get back up and you're able to regain yourself but then you've got to go through the, the process. I love my wife. I thank God for her because she's going to look out for my best interest. This morning or last night, she didn't even say to me, honey, are you going to church? Because I got some capable preachers. I got the mighty clouds of joy up here. They could have preached it. Amen. They could have towed it up. Amen. I could have gave her the first seven minutes and threw the rest of them and all of them could have killed. K-I-L-T it. But she knew I was going to complete my assignment. And she had to help me just like I was a baby to get me up. But she never said, you ain't going. Why are you going? She said, let me do what I need to do to complete my assignment. When I text the doctor and told him, I knew if he was able, he was going to see me this morning. So he opened up his office at 8 o'clock this morning. Just so he said, I need for you to be preaching the gospel. Because somebody's soul is on the line. I said, I hate you missing your service. He said, no, I'm completing my assignment. My assignment is to get you better for the folk that's going to hear the word of God. He came out and talked to my wife. I, I, I couldn't make this up. When you're in this kind of pain, you ain't got time to be making nothing up. And he got me just enough. And, and, and my wife would tell you, I may grab the cane back today. But when I walked out of that doctor's office, I could hang the cane on my wrist. Because as he adjusted me, he prayed in the name of Jesus. 
because that's why you need a doctor that know Jesus. He was saying, in Jesus' name, heal him. He said, I'm adjusting, but heal him. I'm adjusting and heal his back. And some of you say, well, if God, your God's so good, why ain't he heal your back then? Because he's healed me enough to stand up and complete my assignment and do what I need to do. Sometimes healing comes in the form. What did Paul say? Three times I asked the Lord to remove this thorn from my side. And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient. So that you might be able to see, even in your weakness, I'll be able to show my power. And God showed his power through two services this morning just for you. Somebody wants to get saved and you can get saved right now and have that same redeeming power that we feel. If you are out there and you want to repent of your sins and you're ready to repent of your sins and you've got faith to be able to believe that God will save you, it says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And shall believe in the heart that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead, then thou art saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you prayed that prayer, we believe that you've come into the believers in the kingdom and the body of Christ. Call that number on the screen. Call that number, and they're going to put that number up there, that 855 number, and you can call that number. And if you don't have that, there it is. You call that number, and there's somebody waiting to pray with you. And if it goes to voicemail, because so many people are calling, leave your voicemail and your right number, and somebody will call you back and pray with you today, today. And if you want to join the church, call that same number. We have a virtual church and a regular church. Regular church is people who plan to be in the sanctuary. But we've got people in California. We've got people in Egypt, Afghanistan, Nairobi, Kenya. We've got folks in Asia and all over the United States who are part of Simon Temple and our virtual church. You can be too. Call that number. Leave your information and we'll get you set up. And I will receive you into the church as a member. And we'll get your new members, your virtual new members classes going. Because we care that much about you. I only reveal some things that happened to me, uh, happened, uh, my wife and I are able to reveal those things because we want you to let you know the same thing that goes on with your brethren will go on with you. But I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. I'm so tired of people proselytizing the gospel, talking about if you are saved, you ain't gonna have no aches and no pain. If you save, you ain't gonna have no bills. If you save, you always gonna be uh, having a good day. Some days it ain't gonna be a good day. And I might have to lay down the rest of the day, but guess what? I was here and I completed my assignment. And that is nothing but the power of God. Call us and we'll pray for you. Thank you, people of God who came to be with us this morning. We thank you for being with us and witnessing with us this morning and making the sacrifice. And when all God's children get back together in here, what a time, what a time, what a time. Love, grace, and peace be unto you, my brother and sister, from the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord with his face shine upon you and be merciful unto you. May he bless your going out and may he bless your going in. From this time forward and even forevermore, let the redeemed of the Lord sing the threefold amen together. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.